Hey guys, I got a great do-it-yourself project for you. As you see behind me, you've probably seen a lot of information on the internet recently about heat deflector shields for like the Solo Bonfire, which I have, or any other similar fire pit where you, so much of the heat rises and goes away and you don't feel the warmth from it on these cold nights. This will deflect the heat down and make it so much more comfortable to sit out there when it's really cold outside. And I'm gonna show you how to do all this for under $60 and it's a very quick project. Very easy to do, and if you're a beginner, do it yourself. -er. So stay tuned and watch this, and later on, we'll actually light a fire later on this afternoon and see how it works. Hello, my name is Barry. This is Adventures and Stuff. It's all about our traveling adventures, outdoor fun, boating, boat maintenance, fishing, working on things, and just living life. I hope you'll join me. Please subscribe if you like this type of content. Hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And hit the notification bell to be notified of new content. Okay, these are the parts I ordered off of Amazon. And I'll share with you exactly what I ordered. I elected to go with a 28-inch diameter pizza pan. It's 14 gauge aluminum. I wouldn't get anything less than that because you don't want it to get, you know, be flimsy. But a 14 gauge aluminum pizza pan. Then I bought uh, four of these, what they call hairpin legs. Let's see, uh, for it to stand up on. And um, I bought a handle. And I'll show you the link I used for that on Amazon. Um, you can get these anywhere. Uh, you might choose a different design. You get whatever you want. That's the neat thing about this. You can personalize it. Here's the pizza pan I got. I got a 28 inch. You could do a 24 inch. Here are several examples of the legs. You can choose the one that works best for you. And also whatever handle you like. I spent right at 60 to $65. And then I have four bolts. Um, I just get, got something that would fit inside the handle, you know, in the holes. But then you also want to get a washer, a lock washer, and a nut. So you need four of those for the handle. And then as you can see, each one of these legs has five holes. You don't need that many. That's overkill. I actually went with four <clears throat> because I had some number eight bolts with nuts. And you can see there is you know, a regular flat washer there. And then there's a little teeny lock washer and you want a lock washer so you can just tighten it up enough to squeeze the lock washer and it won't come unscrewed and so i put four in each one of those and i use those because i actually had them in my toolbox if i were to go out and buy them um, i ordered these bolts right here off of amazon because it said you know other people had bought that when they bought these legs but those bolts are too big for the holes in the legs. But you could go with little bolts like this that are number eight. Or I would, if I didn't already have those, I would have bought uh, number 10 bolts. So probably the best thing to do, what I would recommend, is maybe order the pizza pan off of Amazon. It doesn't have those holes in there. I've already cut the holes, but I'm going to show you how you measure for those in just a second. But I'd go ahead and get the pizza pan, this... And you can find the handle, you know, at Lowe's or Home Depot or order it off of Amazon. I go ahead and get those and then, you know, see what size bolts you might need. Because, like I said, if you get the same legs I got, I would have probably gone with number 10s. I just happen to have number 8s. So there's no need to buy those um, when I already had them. But anyhow, so those are the materials. It's a simple 28-inch pizza pan. And I'll show you on my stove on my wood stove my uh, solo stove here in a little bit you know how it works you could go with a little smaller diameter you go with the 24 inch diameter if you wanted but uh the 28 inch i think will radiate more heat away from the stove and more people could sit around it and still be comfortable i mean the stove is great when the temperatures aren't real cold but if it gets real cold out a lot of heat rises and goes away from you so this is going to hopefully reflect it back down toward the seats that everybody's sitting in. Like I said, this was a simple DIY project. All you will need, like with my bolts, was a pointed screwdriver, also known as a Phillips head screwdriver. I went ahead for the bigger bolts on the handle. 
I got our old ratchet set. I just used that. So you need, but depending on the size bolts you got, you need the proper one of those. You could just simply use a pair of pliers. You will need an electric drill and a, you know, whatever size drill bits you need. So all I did, if you look to try to figure this out, you can see from the side that leg, this part right here, is angled backwards like that. You'll see in a, a couple minutes, actually about, I think, to the 10 minute and 30 second mark in the video, a better illustration of what I'm trying to show you here with the, the way the leg bends backwards. Okay, so this is the ring that sits on top of your solo stove. You definitely want to get this out. This is going to help you measure. And if I turn that over, and I've already done this step, but I'm going to show you. If you measure across the stove, it's going to be right at exactly 19 inches. So you want those legs when they're... When you put this on top of your solo stove, you're gonna want this leg to be sitting close to the edge of the rim. And if you, you'll notice on your stove, it's gonna have a little lip that comes up right there. So it's gonna hold it in place. So the next thing I will do is take my measuring tape. And just try to center that the best I can. That's like, Four and a half inches to the edge of this pizza pan and come around i just threw it up there so it's a little less than four so i'm going to slide it try to get it close to four and a half inches all the way around about four and a half sorry not trying to make you dizzy there a little bit more than four so probably need to come this way just a little you just want to go around and try to get it centered about in the center of the pan. And then it was taking me a Sharpie and kind of outlining the edges. Because this doesn't have to be exact. You just want those legs to rest in the exact place. All right, so once I did that, so I'm gonna take this off. So bear with me a second. And then here I've taken this leg and I've drawn, putting it up close to the edge. So, you know, it's basically the marks are touching I'll do the same thing there and here and there. All right, so I'm going to place the legs up there and I'll be right back. There's leg number two. And another thing that I want to check as I do that, <clears throat> and just kind of eye this. I want to see if I put a straight edge up there, are these corners, you know, kind of lining up? Okay, so that means I'm kind of square. There, all right, so that's one. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna place the next leg. I'm gonna butt it up to my little line, like so. And then I'm gonna put on my final leg. And I'm gonna look for the corner right here and get in in the place right there right between those two marks if you can see them and you want to get it right in there right on the edge and that looks pretty good and then again my goal is for those legs to come straight down and touch the line and you can see right there they're right Plum. You can see the bubble right here in my level. That means the leg is plumb and it's right down there on the corner. So this is the outline of my ring, the edge of my ring that came with the solo stove that sits on top. So now I know that these are gonna sit there. So then, depending on what you wanna do, if you used a number 10 inch screw, I mean not screw, but a bolt, uh, you could come in and mark mark that hole. I might would do that one, and then do that and that. But you can, you know, mark it with your marker right there in the middle. You can see the dot, and you do that all the way around. And like I said, if I use number eight bolts, I'd use four bolts per leg. If I use number ten, if you want to be safe, do four. I do this one, this one, this one, and this one. 
If I use number 10 and wanted to put three in each leg, I'd probably do this one, this one, and this one back here. So, so that basically that's the layout. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw these on and then I'll show you how I uh, position the handle that I actually bought. So those are the four pieces you need for each hole. So just, I know most people know this, but just in case, the order is you put the flat washer, then the lock washer, which is the smaller of the two, and then the nut on the end. So I'll show you each step. All right, you see I've completed two legs, screwing them in. Now I'm doing the third, and then I'll do the fourth. Okay, one, okay, once again, you know, I make sure my level's plumb, which means that parallel uh, leveling bubble up there in the middle is right between the two lines, comes straight down by the, where my leg will stick out to, and comes straight down to the circle I drew, which is from the ring of the top piece of the uh, solo stove. So perfect fit, it should fit, fit perfectly. As you can see, I got all four legs down, and uh, bolt it in. So now I'm gonna take it, tighten those up, turn it upside down, and uh, put the handle on next. You know, here, you don't need to um, tighten them down so tight. You just wanna compress the uh, lock washer underneath. All right, now is this a dry test? I've got the legs assembled and all tightened up. So I just wanna make sure, so they line up right to the edge of the top of the solo stove. See that one and that one. It's all just a hair, but that really doesn't matter because there's enough flex in here. When you set it down, it goes inside the rim. It's gonna fit in there perfectly. And that one as well. So we've done that part. So the next thing we wanna do is put the final piece on there, which is our handle. Okay, so this is the handle I chose. Again, you might want to go with one that's a rectangular shape. You can pick out anything. I'd at least try to do one, you know, this at least probably about six, you can see this one's six and a half inches wide. I'd probably at least try to get one that width uh, just to make it easier to handle. So if you wanted to try to perfectly center it, you know that's six and a half, and we know we got a 28 inch pan I bought. So go across the pan and it's actually a little bit more than 28 inches, but just barely. If you look at the top of the rim to the top of the rim is right at 28 inches. So if you took six off of that, that would be 22 and a half. Half of 22 is 11, so it'd be like 10 and three quarters of thereabouts. So if I was gonna try to find, you know, kind of like the center, you know, I kind of find the edge of my handle. So I put my handle on there and get to where I'm about like 10 and a uh, half, 10 and three quarters inches from both sides. And just mark my holes right in the center. It kind of fit right dead in the center. You put it down there and then you get your drill and just get a regular drill bit, you know, a metal drill bit. It would be preferable if you have that and just drill, you know, your four holes straight down there. As you can see here, I'm gonna put the bolt down in the hole as such. Then I'm gonna take the flat washer and put it up under there next. And then behind that, I'm gonna put the lock washer like that. And then the nut is gonna go on top of that and you can tighten it down. So so the other thing, you know, you can see I got three of the bolts down. These are actually don't have a thing you can screw it in with a screwdriver. So I'm using my socket set and you see this one won't quite go in there. That's okay. Cause sometimes when you put your drill bit down on the aluminum, you start pushing down, it might move just a hair. So the holes might not line up perfectly. All you need to do is just twist it on down. And just keep on going down. Where it gets flush. Okay, here's the finished project. project. And uh, you can see I put four screws into each leg and then four, or bolts I should say, 
and four bolts in the handle. Again, you can do whatever kind of handle you want. One word of caution, if you put this on here and you're using, you have a hot fire, don't grab this with your bare hand. You would probably want to get an oven mitt or something or, you know, some fire pokers or something and pick it up. Do not touch the metal as it, I'm sure, get very hot. And I have seen examples where somebody gets a wooden, big, thick wooden handle and puts up here. Use your own imagination. That's the cool thing about do-it-yourself projects. You can, uh, you know, kind of do them however you want. One last thing, as you, as you notice, is a smooth edge underneath here, um, which would be where you put a pizza if you were actually putting it. The crust would be down there. This is the bottom of the pan. That. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this down to my patio in my backyard, and we're going to put it on the solo stove. We're going to fire it up and see how it works. Okay, I just lit the fire, getting ready for some action here. I'm going to let it get a little hotter. Get some coals going and then i'm going to put the heat deflector in position and we'll see how it does okay we're getting the fire going getting close to the secondary burn and uh actually i don't see any smoke coming out of the sides and it's funny we got a little misty rain a little low fog all of a sudden and actually it's acting as a cover for the fire so the fire is not getting wet, but I don't think that's going to last long. But yeah, you can tell a big difference. Um, oh, wow. Big difference in the heat coming around. Oh, well, wow. There's a little bit of smoke right there. That's all I saw. And it's gone. So, wow. It's working. So if you're looking for a great little do-it-yourself project, very easy. Anyhow, an awesome little project, a lot of fun. And another cool thing is in the summertime, when I burn my last fire, it probably take me about five minutes to take the legs off and store them, store all the bolts in a Ziploc bag and store the top. It'd be a lot easier than, you know, as it is right now. But as you can see, it fits perfectly on top of the solo stove bonfire. And I think this would work for most any fire pit that's built, you know, cylindrical like this would work fine. So I hope this helps you. I've seen a lot of people putting, you know, information out there, but I hadn't seen anybody actually showing you how to actually put it together. There may be, I don't know, but this is the way I did it and it works great. Well, you can kind of see what time of year it is. It's right near Christmas time. I hope you found this video helpful, and uh, if you did, I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel. I do lots of stuff here. Uh, probably more about boating and fishing, but also doing some DIY projects and some traveling adventures and whatnot. But just having a good time. So if you like this, please subscribe, and uh, if you would, Hit the like button, hit the notification bell to be notified of future videos. And please make any comments. I love to read your comments and try to respond to those as well. So, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. I hope you have a great one. And I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Hey guys, I'm just telling you, I'm out here. <laughs> it's like uh, we've been going a couple hours with the fire but it is really putting off a secondary burn right now and the heat coming out from under the heat deflector is awesome um, I've actually had to move a couple times back and uh, so I think this thing's working great I am very excited that um, you know, I built this thing and I think we'll get a lot of use out of this win winter especially on the colder nights uh, you know, it's always fun to sit by a fire when it's not so cold outside, but when it's very cold, this heat deflector is going to make all the difference in the world. So hopefully this was helpful. Take care. We'll talk to you later.